Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Deep Tech Startup Competition. Probably should repeat it. Welcome to the Deep Tech Startup Competition. Okay, earlier we heard a discussion about what uh, Deep Tech is all about. What does it really mean? So we will have plenty of presentations of Deep Tech here shortly. So you probably will be able to come up with your own definition of deep tech afterwards. But it's not called deep tech just for nothing. Because it's not just a business model innovation we are talking about, but rather an innovation in science or technology around which a business can be created. Deep tech companies have an intellectual property rich science or engineering behind the project. They spend years on testing and research. They have scientists, engineers, other experts, in addition to the business personnel and the team, of course. And as somebody said, if the MVP of a startup cannot be replicated by a team of uh, dedicated developers within a six month, then this startup should be considered as deep tech. But also, deep tech means much longer way to the market. Because it's one thing to discover or design or develop, and quite another thing to mass produce, to monetize, to market. And that's where the help from accelerators and state agencies comes into play. That's why deep tech startup competitions are organized by Commercialization Reactor and Investment and Development Agency of Latvia. Commercialization Reactor is a platform where startups are created. Right now, on another stage, an ignition event is taking place. That's where technologies are showcased to entrepreneurs, and with the help of Reactor, the startups will be created. Next, Commercialization Reactor provides acceleration and investment to those deep tech startups. Investment and Development Agency of Latvia, subordinated to Minister of Economics, aims at increasing competitiveness of Latvian companies, facilitating investment and creating an environment where new business contacts can be made. So here we are in the semi-finals of the deep tech startup competition. All those projects are rich in science or engineering and provide B2B solutions. They are early stage, so before sales, but the uh, science part has been finished. We have uh, 90 semi-finalists in total, and only five finalists will be selected today to compete for the prizes. You will see uh, those valuable prizes on the screen now. So it's uh, two trips to Schaeffler Venture Forum in Germany, phase one acceleration program of EIT raw materials, a gold card for Merck acceleration program selection days, and last but not least, 10,000 euro pre-seed investment from the Commercialization Reactor Fund, including a three-month acceleration program with the possibility of obtaining a further 40,000 euro of pre-seed investment. So overall, 50,000. And uh, five best projects will be selected based on various criteria now on a screen. The selection will be made by a highly competent and, uh, uh, there is a professional jury, Compromised accelerators from different countries, industrial representatives, and of course, investors. Maybe I can ask you just represent yourself with a short one liner. Maybe with, um, starting with Lelis Tukle, head of a jury. Can we put a microphone on? Here we go. Hello, everyone. My name is Lael de Stukla, and I represent the Commercialization Reactor Fund. Hello, everybody. My name is Hoi uh, Bardans. I'm from the Netherlands. I represent Brightlands Innovation Factory, an accelerator for Brightlands with a most focus on smart materials, uh, sustainable pro chemical processes, and biomedical. Hi, Sasha Kelberg. I had a chance to introduce myself in an earlier presentation. Uh, Groglas uh, from Latvia. Good afternoon, uh, Mikko Korhonen, uh, EIT Raw Materials. Uh, we provide sub support and funding for startups and scale ups, mainly for uh, metal and industrial mineral sectors. 
So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Elena Müller from Scheffler, and I'm representing today the, the industry. So we are a global leader in the automotive industry in terms of supplying components and automotive systems to almost every OEM in the world. And we also have our industrial business, which is mainly focusing on bearings and yeah, innovative indus industrial 4.0 solutions. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Janis Südner from the Merck Accelerator Program in Darmstadt. And we are especially looking for startups in the field of healthcare, life science, and performance materials. So if you have any questions um, about the program, please feel free to approach me or my colleague in these nice hoodies. Hello, Toby Moore, Informata Capital. Uh, we have a, a seed fund here in Riga. I've invested in about 30 startups, many of which are deep tech. Um, and we've sold uh, one of our startups, which went through the commercialization rector a few years ago, sold three years ago to Schaeffler. So we've been through the whole process <laughs> together. OK, thank you very much. I think we can just make an applause for our jury. <clears throat> OK, and uh, we are about to start our competition. So I should just uh, remind our dear competitors to remember the judging criteria. And please follow the regulament, because uh, uh, your pitches should be maximum four minutes long. And we will be pretty strict on that. And it will be followed by three minutes of question and answer from a jury, and then forward to the next one, and then forward to the next one, and so on, and so on. And we will have a 12th presentation before the coffee break, and then seven presentations afterwards. So it's a good tempo for us. Are we ready to start? OK, so the first presentation for today will be from the Laser Vision. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Uh, how do you feel? You're the first one on stage. I feel good. Good. Is it an advantage to be a first one? I think it's an advantage because I will have a whole afternoon free. <laughs> whole afternoon <laughs> free. Here we go. This is the most important stuff. Your time starts now. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Janis Plakanis, and I'm here to present Team Laser Vision. Did you know that construction-related spendings reach almost 13% of world's GDP? And at the same time, the productivity growth of the construction industry has been only 1% for the last 20 years. One of the reasons for this weak performance is the low level of digitalization. Construction industry has been recognized as one of the least digitized industries together with plucking and hunting. As for today, even on large construction projects, printed drawings and primitive measurement instruments are used to locate exactly the place where the installation should be done. And this leads to lots of installation mistakes, reworks, delayed schedules, penalties, and waste of time. But don't worry. Laser vision is here to change it. A laser vision is a solution which brings building information model to construction site. The central part, of it, the central part of it is software, which central part of it is software, uh, which takes uh, out uh, relevant information from BIM model, from BIM file, and then it uh, shows on the construction site wall the drawing where the installation has to be done. And besides that, it can help to tell exactly where the device is located. And on the construction site, it would look like this. There we have a three-dimensional model of a room uh, with all the engineering system inside it. It's electricity, it's water supply, etc. And then, for a technician, there are certain places important to make an installation. And these places are marked in uh, red, here you can see. And there is... Uh, ready projection which comes out from the laser vision device. So the engineer or technician who is doing the installation, he can know exactly where to drill a hole or where to fasten the pipe. We have estimated that laser vision would make direct savings 2% of total construction costs. And based on this, we see that in the nearest future there is a market of 33 million euros in Scandinavian Baltics alone. And in Europe, it would make 600 million euros market. 
For as a competitors, we assume that uh, printed drawings and traditional measurement instruments like a ordinary measurement tape are still there, and it will take time for people to change their habits. And also augmented reality solutions are a competitor because these technologies also evolve very rapidly to today, also in construction industry. But the laser vision advantage there is uh, that it's more safe for using for a technician. It's not very safe for a technician to hold a tablet in one hand and to do the construction works with the other hand. So we are a team of four at the moment, and our biggest strength is a solid knowledge of construction industry, which is combined with the knowledge of software and hardware development. Also, we have our key partner, one of the leading design and installation companies in Latvia, which will be an early adapter of our product and will provide a test field to develop it. In six months, we are planning to build a prototype which will be valid for field testing so that we can bring it on site. And uh, we are seeking also for investment to boost the development of our project. So thank you for your attention. I hope I got you interested. If you have any questions, feel free to ask now or catch up later. All right, thank you. <clears throat> so the jury, some questions? Um, yeah, thanks. Nice idea. Um, we, we've seen other, other sort of things around uh, digitizing construction industry, and, and it seems that the construction industry is quite conservative. So as, as you mentioned, lots of paper, paper drawings and tape measures still. So how, how would you um, get over that barrier of, of addressing quite uh, a conservative industry with, with your solution in terms of like marketing and sales? Um. The core of our team, we uh, work in the construction industry and we know very well the problems and we know very well how it uh, works. And uh, it obviously will take time and there will be a part of uh, people who will not switch as quickly to new technologies and digitalize. Uh, but uh, if the solution works, it gives true benefits, which you can see as a money in your pocket. So this will have to take time, but it uh, will still work, yeah. It's just uh, time and work with the industry. Uh, what would be your unit selling price and how many units you would be selling next year? Our target uh, is actually to provide the services uh, at first. We plan that uh, our key uh, is, it works like a system and not, not, not the hardware. It's not just to sell a hardware. We will sell a, a service uh, which is custom made or there will be a subscription fee. Um, okay, then to follow up on this, um, who would be your final customer? So would it be the construction company or the, um, the work company? Yes, we see that the final customer is a construction company because this uh, is to be used. Uh, the technician who will actually do the installation works will use the device. Yeah. I wanted to ask, uh, you, you mentioned that uh, current competitors, let's say uh, a worker holding a tablet with, with augmented reality app is much more unsafe. Yep. But uh, what about uh, cost? So how much more is your product going to be and what extra things would it require from the workmen to have with them, let's say a special device? Uh, it will be a hardware device which you put in the room and just with a couple of things done just to push some buttons and it will show the, uh, show the drawing project on the wall or on the ceiling. So of course it uh, might cost more than a tablet but uh, this cost is not really significant compared to what it can save in the construction field. But what will be the, the price of the hardware? The price of the hardware, actually, the, how much it would cost would be like uh, till 1,000 euros, but uh, it's not going to be, as I told, it's not going to be sold as a piece of hardware and then you use it. So we will provide it as a service. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> And our next pitch will be from a 3D strong. Please welcome. <laughs> 3D strong. Are you strong on your presentation skills also? Yeah, we're strong enough. Thank you. Great. Then let's start. 
Hello to everyone. My name is Marina Petrichenko. I'm co-founder and CEO of 3D Strong Companies. We produce special additives for 3D printing materials, which increase mechanical strength and durability up to 10 times. Do you remember how promised was 3D printing technology? The technology that can change manufacturing process completely. But actually, it's never happened. Materials never happened enough strong. And uh, only prototyping is possible with this technology. But we have a solution how to make a really good material uh, with uh, really strong uh, durability and uh, strength, and uh, just simply adding our carbon nanotubes as uh, additives to this material. So it is, will allow us to print real things for real use. Our additives can be used uh, in all three existing types of 3D printing material for filaments, for powders, and for liquids. Currently, our technology for polymers uh, increases mechanical strength and durability by 50%, just adding 0.5% of our carbon nanotubes. And also, depend on client request, we can remove static or provide electroconductivity to existing products. Our additives, uh, I want to add, that can be used not only for 3D printing materials, but also for any kind of polymers, plastics, metals. And it's really important that our product will be addressed to different uh, industries, such as aerospace, healthcare, and uh, also automotive. Uh, so, who we are? We are the purest manufacturer of carbon nanotubes. The purity of our materials is 99.5%, and it's really important for all industrial applications. Uh, for example, our closest competitor has uh, purest of uh, carbon nanotubes is just 75%. Uh, we have a really strong scientific team with uh, experience more than 25 years in nanotechnologies field. Uh, me and my colleague Maria, we are running a business part of our company, and we're really proud that we have in our advisory board uh, ex-vice president of Intel, uh, Professor Herman Uhl, and we was selected as a part of ABC group acceleration process and commercialization reactor. We are really proud of that. Thank you. Uh, what we already achieved for the last uh, 18 months, uh, we have laboratory prototype and test done. We already established laboratory uh, production, and uh, the coolest thing, we already made a pilot with our U.S. partners and received pre-order for 24 kilograms in the first year with estimated revenue about 140,000 euros. And this year, we are ready to start production and selling our materials. Our potential clients uh, could be all producers uh, of uh, 3D printing uh, materials and equipment, and uh, here is the sixth biggest player on the market, and we already established a contact with two of them. Uh, market of 3D printing materials, uh, currently it's uh, 30, 20 billion euro till uh, year 2020, and it's a really good growth for the last two years, it's growth for Three billion. Our business model, we are selling materials and we took royalties from a production. What we already achieved, we raised it, uh, first uh, money from acceleration program, uh, commercialization reactor and ABC group, and we are looking 200K to meet demand for first three clients. And for the last stage, we are looking 800,000 for production inside, which can give us uh, 440 kilograms of additives with annual revenue 6 million and profit about 4 million. We have really good margin. So thank you for your attention. Now to your questions, let's uh, print real things for real use. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so it's time for your questions. Hi, uh, quick question. Um, you mentioned competitors. What is unique about your production process? Uh, we uh, actually establish all our equipment by ourselves. We have a really strong engineer team. Uh, we uh, produce a chemical vapor deposition reactor for carbon nanotubes production, also for graphene production, but it's different uh, uh, a bit applications. Uh, and uh, our carbon nanotubes has uh, actually really good purity, 99.5% is the biggest purity of the market. But why are they better? They are better because they work better <laughs> in industrial application, and we have really good uh, technologies for applied them in industries. So can that be copied? Uh, it could be 
Actually, all could be copied, but uh, we asked our scientists it uh, might be copied um, after three years, for example. Yeah, so. Um, lots, lots of different types of industries uh, where applications, as, as you listed. Yeah. Um, and for each case, they'd need to go through some sort of testing, um, testing process to, to be convinced. So what, what's your first uh, or primary industry then you'd like to, to go for? Yeah, uh, we are closest uh, to the market with uh, just uh, 3D printing materials uh, for aerospace. We already have a client from US which tested uh, our editors. They produce 3D printing material. But won't, won't that take a long time? Then if it's aerospace and very risk averse, for them to go through and test and then, and then confirm that it works. Yeah, we already tested it, it confirmed it, and they're just uh, waiting uh, to buy our products. We already signed them with you and pre-agreement with them. Okay. Um, I think there was a point on the last slide about IP. So do you have an uh, IP strategy at the moment? Uh, yeah, we're keeping our technology We are know-how. We have uh, two different know-how. One, it's a manufacturing process of carbon nanotubes, and the second one, it's uh, about uh, how actually modified process of carbon nanotubes. Because just simple carbon nanotubes, it doesn't work in uh, technology. You need to modify and functionalize uh, this material. So we are keeping this, uh, we are know-how and we are planning to make a PCT application for the patent uh, till the end of this year. Okay, so it can be patented? Yeah, it can be patented, yeah. Tell me more about what your additives can do for uh, metal powders being used in 3D printing. Uh, for metal powders, we uh, actually just uh, started to test our technology. We have the laboratory prototype of uh, this uh, and we are tested it uh, uh, with uh, steel, steel, steel powder, but yeah, we, we increase uh, mechanical strength. Uh, it was about 45%. Yeah. Yeah, one last remark: DSM is the major, major shareholder of our campus and uh, corporate partners. So have a yeah, chat I know. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we really hope that we can cooperate with you in this field. So, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And the next speech will be delivered by Hurricane and Winder. Uh, you will bring a hurricane here on stage? Yeah, let's hope that, uh, but that there won't be any damage after the presentation. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Let's go. Your time starts now. Hi, I'm Svante Henriksson from Hurricane and Winder. We're a spin-off uh, from academics. I've been in climate and meteorology research for the last 11 years, and we're the winner of AstroSat Disaster Management Challenge in Copernicus Masters this year. So you can see from this picture, hurricane intensity is very important for how much damage it creates. Uh, one point change on the scale of intensities on the five-point scale is a seven-fold uh, change in damages statistically. But current weather forecasts don't forecast this parameter well. That's because the uh, forecast works by simulating the physics of the atmosphere on a certain resolution that's not good enough to capture all these essential details that we can see in the satellite images and that we know from our own and from others' research that are very important for how the eye and eye wall, this key low pressure area in the center that drives the storm, how it develops. So here you can see the evolution over time of the forecast error for the hurricane track. The forecast is improving drastically. Over the last 30 years, it's gone down by 70% for the 24-hour forecast, whereas the intensity forecast is barely improving. Now, the solution that we suggest is machine learning on these satellite images of high resolution that we know contain the information relevant for the intensity. Uh, the only image recognition that's currently used in state-of-the-art weather forecasting is the now casting of hurricanes, uh, wind speeds. When we don't have a measurement, we can look at the satellite image and connect it to the wind speed at the moment. So we're using convolutional recurrent neural networks, and we also include the standard weather forecast as one input stream. So here's the demo of our product. Uh, uh, we have statistical information, uncertainties, probabilities for how the intensity can develop along different tracks. 
And then we have the newest satellite images from all the available satellites. These are all free data uh, that provide us with further information and our clients of information that's relevant for the internal structure of the hurricane. That's the one that we're very interested in. Uh, our main target industries are uh, disaster management and collateralized reinsurance that's managed uh, in real time. These are all uh, multi-billion euro industries, or tens of billions even. So if we can re reduce, help them reduce even a, s a small part of the damages, then uh, this can be very profitable. And we've already agreed on some pilot uh, projects. Uh, some of the customerships go through public money or semi-public money through, through trust funds. Uh, and I just want to show you how this works in theory. So we're building a better model at this moment, but we can also expand to better data, like this biologging and Internet of Things is now uh, growing at this moment. Uh, and then the added services are the ones that make the products really valuable. Here's our team. It's me. I've been 11 years in the field. Uh, Mr. Pasila here has funded, uh, founded many companies and grown them into multi millions, some of them even uh, tens of millions of euros valuation. Here's our experienced full stack developer, and we have a world leading scientist that lives in a hurricane area with, uh, uh, who is an expert on hurricane intensity, who's our scientific advisor. So we have a seed investment from Finland now to build a prototype, and next we're looking for an investment to build these additional services that are valuable for uh, disaster management and reinsurance. Thanks. Thank you very much. We really hope no hurricanes will come to this region, right? But um, time for your questions. Um, with, with insurance, you, um, you mentioned there's possibility to reduce the insurance costs. So if there's a very intense hurricane um, heading towards a city, and um, it's known it's a very intense hurricane, so how, how can the insurance company reduce its insurance cost? Uh, the insurance company cannot at that moment do, do a lot, but how re insurance companies have reinsur reinsurers, and the re a lot of the reinsurance is collateralized at this moment and bought up by hedge funds and other financial actors. And these, ones, these are more liquid assets, and they're managing the risk uh, in real time by making kind of trading that's anti-correlated with the damages and that kind of things. So indirectly, then, that can bring more liquidity and, uh, to the insurance market and but, but help how, with that. But how does that affect your business? Uh, so we, our clients could be these holders of collateralized reinsur reinsurance because that makes their business more profitable, their reinsurance holdings. They, they are liable for the damages because they hold the collateralized reinsurance. So if they can reduce the amount they have to pay out, then they can buy our product and benefit that way. But meaning that they, with more knowledge of intensity, they can sell out or um, like reinsure more of the risk that they're, they're holding? They, are, they have knowledge of the market, like real-time correlations of what, ki what kind of things happen. When this happens, the other thing happens and so on. I'm not familiar with all the really the technical details yeah, of it. No, I'm just trying to understand your, your business. So, so we sell the forecast to the holder, to the hedge fund, for example, who holds the collateralized reinsurance. Yeah. They have multi-billion euros at stake every time. Okay. And, and regarding your business model, so uh, what would be the business model and how much would you charge the, those, those companies for your product? Uh, so now we're having a demo with a, with a Scottish company, Astrosat, and through that we can, they, are, they already have the Vietnamese government as a customer for disaster management intelligence from satellites in general. So this would now be an added module to know the intensity a little bit better beforehand together with all their real-time information about floods and movements of people and, and this kind of things. So that's one option, like business to business. Uh, then we can also apply for projects. There's a lot of funds that invest in this kind of early warning systems. In Bangladesh, one United Nations study said that every dollar invested in uh, early warning systems pays back eight to five hundred dollars. So from these trust funds, we can apply for projects and then provide this as a service uh, together with maintenance and, and uh, real-time uh, forecasts. 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And the next picture will be delivered by Catalico. Hey. How are you? Good, good. Are you nervous a bit? It's nice to be on the big stage. On a big stage, right? Yes. <laughs> so it's your time on a big stage now. Yes, so hi, my name is Reilis, and let me introduce you Catalico. And um, we are operating in a chemical commodity markets where the margins are very narrow. And I will show you how our technology can help to improve these margins by improving the performance of catalysts and absorbents. So catalysts and absorbents are used in most uh, of processes in chemical uh, industry. And um, for example, in ammonia production, uh, absorbent is used to remove sulfur from natural gas, and later catalysts are used to boost the reaction of ammonia production. And they have common and very important characteristics like uh, surface area and strength. And our method for production of nano-sized particles allows to improve these characteristics, and that leads to higher reaction rate, better selectivity, and longer lifetime. And the benefit of this is increase of margins. During the development of this technology, we have uh, found our best market fit in sulfur absorbents and methanol catalysts. Here, we already have five market-ready products approved in industrial scale. We are ready to, uh, to offer them already to our customers that are absorbent and catalyst producers. There are around 60 of them worldwide. And we intend to start with European companies, but target all 60 globally. Our business model is a combination of licensing and supply. We will develop custom absorbent and catalyst formulas and license them to catalyst and absorbent producers. But our core know-how on production of nano-sized particles we will keep separately and supply them as a raw material to our licensees. This allows us to keep our, our know-how secret, also to monitor the production amounts under our license, and also develop new applications for our materials. The market of uh, these products is quite big. Uh, it makes around 20 billion combined, and it is growing. But this is only the beginning. Based on our method, we are going to develop new applications for our zinc oxide and copper oxide nanoparticles, uh, for example, in tire and rubber production that consumes half of the market, and in, uh, uh, in uh, ceramics market, that's the second biggest consumer. And we have the best team to make it. Vera is our lead scientist. Her parents are the developers of our background technology, so she grew up with this technology. I am the CEO of company, entrepreneur with 20 years of experience, uh, working with startups for, from 2010, and also helped to achieve exits to global companies. And Alexey is our uh, commercialization expert and our co-founder, and we have great support from our experts and accelerator teams. So far, we have gone through several acceleration programs, uh, raised some pre-seed funding, and started cooperation with potential partners. We, uh, in January this year, we signed LOE with Lanxess, who are interested to buy high surface area zinc oxide catalyst, and that's exactly what we have. Now we are going to, we are preparing samples for, uh, for this customer. And after successful tests and receiving initial order, we will raise uh, next round of funding to, to prepare our pilot production and get first revenues. So thank you for this opportunity, and let's make the margins bigger. Thank you very much. And now time for your questions. Quick question. Well, who are your competitors? Uh, we have a very interesting situation here because our customers are at the same time our competitors because uh, they have their own R&D labs where they also try to improve their products. So it's a combination of <laughs> the customers are also our competitors. And where are you doing your pilot production at the moment? 
Like your, your uh, sample, sample production? Yeah, we are now uh, searching for options uh, with, uh, with big enough, enough uh, reactors where we can uh, do our uh, sample because it is bigger as a lab sample. So we, I have found several options like uh, companies in Sweden, Germany, and the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, now we need to choose uh, where we can uh, do this. But probably it will be in the Netherlands. Uh, can you also give uh, indication how, uh, how much better your product than the closest competitor product? Yeah, so the uh, first, uh, the, the, there is this increase of uh, the surface area, uh, which is... Uh, it depends on the applications. It's very different, but uh, in some in some times it can be like uh, uh, thirty percent percent uh, bigger surface area. But the uh, very good improvement is in the lifetime. Our tests show that the lifetime can be extended by one point one point five times. So it is um, also a good achievement and purity. And who's your first customer in which area? Uh, Lanxess is a chemical uh, commodity producer. All right, so thank you very much. More questions? No? One more? No questions at all. Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and our next pitch will be delivered by Verita Cell. Welcome. <clears throat> I used to sing uh, in vino veritas, uh, the truth is in wine, or do you agree? No. Yeah, it's <laughs> actually both in wine and in, skin, in stem cells. Okay, great. So this stage is yours. <laughs> Suffering in a huge fire is a big fear for all of us. For survivors who get hospitalized with severe burns, a typical procedure involves taking a piece of healthy skin from other places on the body and place, placing it onto the wound to heal. That's called skin grafting, and it's a terrible process. If such unfortunate event took place in your life, you would have to spend at least 10 days in the hospital and then return multiple times to repeat the procedure. And it doesn't always help. There's high risk of infection starting in the wound, and the, the body might just reject that new piece of skin. Both those cases bring additional stress to the body already in pain. And even after the treatment, intense scaring remains with the patient for their whole life. For more than 50,000 people in Europe each year, it is a lifelong torture, not necessarily a physical one, but a psychological one for sure. The hospitals are doing their best in finding the best solutions, but their options are limited because of the financial constraints and limited hospital resources. Now imagine if instead of going through the extremely unpleasant, lengthy, and risky process involving skin grafting, a surgeon would just pour a liquid solution with your own cells onto the wound within 30 minutes, which would then trigger the healing within a day. There will be no risk of infection or rejection, no, uh, no need to repeatedly visit the hospital, and most importantly, no scarring, so you would not even remember where your burn was. Well, that's exactly what we do with Veritacell Medical Kit for Surgeons. It is essentially a pack of medical tools and a unique methodology allowing to extract as many skin stem cells as possible, which is the building material for the new skin. Here's how it works. The surgeon takes a really small piece of skin, extracts as many skin stem cells as possible, and applies them in a liquid solution in a thin layer onto the wound. All of that within 30 minutes on the spot. And the cells, the way the cells are obtained allows to accelerate and enhance the healing. And afterwards, the skin looks and feels just as it was before. And it's not just burns. Whenever fast and effective skin regeneration is needed, Veritasol kit will be the best option. The technology had been in development for three years. After forming a team at last year's Ignition event, we have received pre-seed investment from Commercialization Reactor Fund, and we've validated our solution with the leading Latvian surgeons. We're planning to conduct safety and efficacy tests on animals soon, and actually, we found a way to enter the market within a year, much faster than typical medical solutions. 
and the market itself is huge, at least 1 billion euro a year in Europe alone. Our current market profile is medical uh, surgery and plastic surgery. That's where we can make the most impact. We're planning to charge payment per kit or license the solution to big already existing players. Here's our two closest competitors. What, we, what puts us ahead is that we can extract the most number of cells and our solution does not require any additional expensive specialist equipment, and which allows to increase the speed both of the healing and the procedure itself. Here's our ambitious team, built around excellent scientific expertise in cell biology and supported by true experts in deep tech commercialization. We're looking for industry partners to conduct pilot testing, and towards the end of the year, we'll be raising funds. My name is Arseni. I'm co-founder of Veritasel. Burned patients must not undergo the torturous process of skin grafting. Our solution can eliminate the lifelong suffering of the patients. Join us. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see a question is ready. Um, you mentioned you're at safety and efficacy testing, um, and on the other side, you're, you're going to be in the market in a year's time. So what, what sort of clinical studies do you need to do and certification? Yeah. Uh, the thing is that we don't need any clinical studies or preclinical studies either. The thing is that we've found out that to reach the market, we would need just a couple of months, half a year maximum, to just certify all the components of the kit to be CE marked. But why would we conduct the efficacy tests on animals still? Because we would like to show some evidence both to the doctors and investors as well. So basically, we don't need them, but we will still conduct them. Uh, can you describe, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you describe a little bit how you take the existing skin that you will put on the, uh, on the wound? Okay, so uh, the kit contains a special knife, a dermatome, it's called. So it's basically a very, very thin knife, which helps to take a really thin layer of the skin from the patient, and then to, to manipulate with that. So basically there's a special knife for surgeon to take that. So do you have any data that this works? Yes, we have, uh, the technology has been proven in the laboratory, on the real skin, not on the person still, but uh, on, the, on the real skin already in the laboratory. So we want to, our next step is to prove on animals, on living organisms, that it really works that well. Um, is there a maximum surface of, uh, where you can apply your technology to? Yes, uh, two times two centimeter piece of skin can heal up to 40 times bigger area of wound. Um, well, just, just back to your yeah. in, in the market within a year. So how, how will you convince people to, or doctors to, to use this technology if it's not, uh, yeah, it's not approved by anyone? So uh, the thing is that technology of using own patient cells for skin regeneration has already been proven by various researchers. No, no, the technology is fine, but you yeah. still need to convince people to, to try this unproven thing. That's right, but the thing at the core of our product is already proven. We're just using uh, improved methodology to use it. And our uh, components will be CE certified and will also show some evidence from the efficacy test. And that will help, will help us convince them. So that means that there's already a technology that is in use like, like yours, uh, which uses stem cells to regenerate skin? Yeah, something similar. It's already in use? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. And your uniqueness is, uh, is distribution or it's? It is uh, in the way how we obtain those cells. Okay. So we can obtain them in the maximum qu quantity. What will be the price of such a kit? Um, we haven't thought very precisely yet, but we are currently looking at approximately 1,000 per kit, 1,000 euros. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And the next picture will be delivered by Semantic Intelligence. Please welcome. <coughs> yes. Should we pay notice to semantics of your speech? Of course. <laughs> Great, your time starts now. Hello, uh, our company Semantic Intelligence helps pharma industry to accelerate their R&D processes by analyzing scientific evidence. So today, it takes 14 years and costs $2.6 billion to take new drug to the market. So this long uh, journey consists of several stages, and we are focusing on a basic research where the uh, scientists are working with a lot of data coming from the clinical trials, patents, and scientific uh, journals. 
So today, 92% uh, of the uh, research projects entering the clinical uh, trials actually fail. So this is why uh, basic research is a very important stage in order to get as much as uh, scientific evidence as possible to get uh, a more, more positive outcome of the research project. So uh, we know the answer how we can bring down those huge numbers for the drug discovery. And the answer is data. However, 80% of the big health data now is unstructured in the form of the text, and it's increased by 45% each uh, year. So it means there is a no human uh, scientist or no human being who can read all uh, our data available for this particular uh, research project. And actually, search engines that we, uh, for example, uh, Google, it doesn't help you at all because it gives you the keyword-driven results, it gives you links to the articles you should read by yourself, and only when you uh, enter the question in English, it gives you the answer in English. So instead of a search engine, we are developing the find engine, which actually uh, provides exact answers to your uh, questions and also uh, the, provides scientific evidence to support this answer. Uh, and our software actually reads and understands uh, each um, document and each article for you. And most importantly, we are uh, using a cross-language approach, which means uh, when you are, uh, when you are um, asking the question in English, uh, it also reads and uh, delivers results in uh, Japanese, Chinese, and Russian. So the last year, uh, we have been able to find the industry partner and the first or, uh, letter of intent. In this year, we have been able to get a proceed investment from the commercialization reactor uh, fund. And currently, we are running our first user uh, tests on our first MVP. So the market uh, is growing very fast. Uh, we are actually targeting the English-speaking um, market, especially uh, EU and uh, UK markets. So our main uh, potential customers will be drug discovery service companies and contract research organizations working, who works with uh, big uh, pharma players. Competition is high there, uh, which is a good thing for us. And uh, there is a two main uh, competitive advantages that we present. So the first, uh, I already uh, explained to you, this is a cross-language approach, uh, where, which allows uh, scientists to work in uh, four languages simultaneously. And also, we bring high-precision results uh, by our technology, which uh, combines natural language processing, machine learning, and deep linguistic analysis, which, which is our core competence. So here uh, you can see our fantastic team behind this uh, fantastic project. And uh, today we are looking for industry experts and uh, also the pot potential investors because we will be raising our next financial round, uh, investment round, which in the next three um, months. So thank you very much. If you are interested in uh, this project, I will be more than happy to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, please go on with questions. Um, so I, I guess it's software, but what is your product? Uh, excuse me? I guess it's software, yes. but what is your product? Uh, our product uh, will be the, not the search engine, but the find engine, or, or uh, if it's more understandable, it's a search engine for the drug discovery scientists. So we basically named it the Google for drug discovery scientists, but it actually works in a different way because in, uh, instead of uh, providing you uh, direction where, where you need to look up the information, it actually gives you exact answer and also, um, and also provides scientific evidence uh, which backups this particular answer. Okay, so, so you're, you're indexing pat uh, cap patents in four languages. Uh, not only patents, uh, actually uh, our vision is to combine more than 25 uh, drug discovery specific databases, uh, which consists uh, not only of uh, structured, unstructured uh, databases, which is like text, but also the structured data, uh, for example, the uh, pub, um, pub chamber and, and so on. And, um, and the patents could be very, very uh, valuable also um, source for uh, drug discovery scientists. Uh, and there is a one uh, very good reason behind that, uh, because uh, before there is a, some kind of uh, scientific publication, there is a data that competitors can, uh, can use and analyze, which is uh, uh, published in a patent databases. 
Uh, you said there are already uh, lots of competing uh, products mm -hmm. available. Yeah. Uh, please tell us what makes your product uh, unique. Uh, why should I buy from you instead of the others? Yeah. I think you were getting there, but in a nutshell, please. Yes, okay. Uh, so basically, this is a relatively new uh, market because uh, the companies are starting to apply particul particularly artificial intelligence for drug discovery. Um, there is a few, few actually, uh, years ago. Uh, however, our uh, main uh, competitive advantage is first of all that we are, um, our software actually reads not only in English, which is uh, basic research uh, language for each uh, scientist all over the world, but it also reads and understands uh, three other languages, the Russian, uh, Japanese and Chinese. And why we picked those uh, uh, three other uh, languages? Because of the industry request, because uh, particularly now, uh, um, scientists who is working uh, in the West side, uh, they know what is happening when uh, information is published in English. However, they don't know what is actually happening in East side. So we are bringing together these two, these two worlds and make ultimate search engine or find engine for the drug discovery. And how difficult is it for these competitors to catch up with the advantages that you have at the moment? They can try. <laughs> it's a good answer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And the next speech will be delivered by Vigo. Please welcome. <clears throat> How do you come up with, with that kind of name, Vigo? Vigo, can you guys hear me? Can you guys, yeah? Is that, is yeah. that working? Uh, we actually worked with, uh, I worked with stroke patients from a stroke society called oh. Vigor here, here in Latvia, actually, and mm. uh, I got inspired from the name, and uh, I took it from there. Great. Go on. Thanks a lot. Um, hey, guys. Hey, everyone. My name is Kristaps, and I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Vigo. We are, uh, we are developing a digital therapy for stroke recovery. And let me tell you a bit more about it. So a little bit about the background of our product. Um, I have two years of experience in stroke research from Copenhagen and in Denmark and, and from Riga in Latvia. And I'm a graduate of, I'm, I'm a, graduate of a healthcare innovation program from Copenhagen Business School. Uh, we have strong, this product has a strong scientific basis in neuroscience, in rehabilitation therapy, science and psychology. And uh, we are collaborating also with the best rehabilitation and uh, best rehabilitation therapists and, and uh, other scientists in the field. So let me explain the problem. Uh, stroke is a massive uh, and horror is, is, is a massive is, is a disease of a massive scale. Uh, every two seconds, someone is affected by stroke. Um, unfortunately, right after the initial therapy in the rehab center, which is usually quite successful, the stroke patients get the stroke patients get back home and there's almost no support um, for the stroke patient because of the lack of human resources. And there's also no attention to their mental health, which all results in a hugely ineffective care. And this is the reason why only 10% of the people recover, 90%, unfortunately, some of them die, and most of them rely on expensive long-term care. And that means huge costs for people, for their families, and for healthcare systems. And this cost is unfortunately growing because the stroke cases are growing and also the, 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 the age of stroke patient unfortunately decreases. So we have to act now and we have a solution. We bring the therapy in software. We take, we take uh, working therapy, clinically validated therapy and digitize it, thereby making it widely accessible, radically accessible in a scale that hasn't been there before. Why does it work, you may ask? Well, we take evidence-based rehabilitation strategies, so-called the gold standard in stroke care, and it includes physical therapy, patient education, and neurobehavioral modification. And we combine it with artificial intelligence, which really makes the care uh, deliverable without a lot of a human, without, without a minimal human, with a minimal human assistance. So status and traction, we have our prototype, uh, deliver, we have our prototype developed, and we're starting a pilot trial in May. Um, we are starting sales, we plan to start sales in November of this year and uh, a clinical trial also late this year. And we, start, we, went, we went to have international partnerships uh, within the next year. 
Our business model, we have talked about this quite a lot in our company and, uh, and with, with, with our advisors and people around, but we are kind of narrowing down to a one business model right now, and it's a B2C subscription-based solution, at least as a business model to, to start with. Uh, we are looking at 90 euros contract value per month, and we think we can get about 20% of stroke survivors, uh, and, and the overall market is about 60 million. Uh, so this is our team. Um, my my co-founder Janis is sitting in the audience. He's a neurosurgeon, and then we have a CDO Liga who is who is currently working. Um, and then we have a really cool list of advisors. So just to mention one, we have Beth, uh, who is a commercial head of commercial at Sandoz Nordics. We also have great great research people here and, uh, and 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 experts in psychology and in the field of rehabilitation therapy. Finally, uh, stroke care is extremely ineffective as it's at the moment. And we have a solution here, and we plan to deliver a product, at least our MVP, in November of 2019. Thank you so much. Thank you, and uh, time for questions. Uh, thanks for the presentation. I maybe didn't get it. What exactly is your product? Is that a mobile app? Yes. So basically, it's an app. It's called a digital therapeutic app, and that's kind of the new wave of, of, of therapy coming in right now. Um, it's already it's already a, it's already a standardized therapy. Let's say in substance abuse, in post-traumatic stress disorder, in early stage dementia. These kind of solutions are coming in quickly and taking over the medical world. And we are making a solution for stroke care. And yes, it's an app, uh, and it looks a little like just a little glimpse. It looks kind of like that. So, so a patient starts using it, and then uh, he or she can talk to Vigo. And, and then there's also a digital, digital uh, therapy guide in a physical therapy, but there's also a psychological element there and also neurobehavioral modification. And behavioral modification is actually the key here. And uh, just a related question. Stroke patients, my assumption is that those are usually, or more likely, older people. And they have some uh, movement uh, impairments. So would they be able to use your app? Indeed. Um, great question. So uh, people are actually answering not by typing their answers. They are choosing the button on the screen that, that best corresponds to their needs. And we're running a pilot trial now to see how it works and engages with a patient. But so far, the tests have been pretty good. So they can engage with the app. Uh, great product. I, um admire that you are trying to reach, go to the consumers, from business to consumers, and uh, what is exactly your strategy to reach this geographically and economically diverse group of millions of people who are potentially your customers? Um, great question. I mean, as I said before, we have debated quite a lot about the business model, and I'm not sure I have a perfect answer for you now of how to, how to reach them, but you know, Currently, these people would want to have rehabilitation. They want rehabilitation. Unfortunately, there's not enough human resources out there to take care of all stroke patients. There's also not enough rehab centers. They have to wait in Latvia, for instance. They have to wait about a month until they can get to a rehab facility. So they actually want to start rehabilitation quicker, but there's simply not, not enough space. So they would be ready to, to, to buy something like this. Tell me more about your uh, business model or revenue model. Uh, uh, assume I get a stroke and I, I subscribe your product. Do I do it for a one month, two months, nine months, or what's the model here? That's another thing that we're thinking about. And uh, what we're looking, I mean, our idea is to make a four month of um, rehabilitation program, and then the patient would pay for the four month every month. Um, they could also subscribe to a six-month rehabilitation or a year of rehabilitation if they would like. But initially, I mean, we are, we're, we're now thinking of developing a set, set program for four months of rehabilitation. Does that answer your question? Yeah. And, and what would you need to convince the health insurers then to pay a big chunk of that 90 euros a month? Uh, yeah, that's clinical trials. We need evidence. I mean, we're working in medical field. We need evidence. Uh, and we're actually planning to get the evidence. We have, uh, I mean, Beth, uh, our commercial advisor, is, is, uh, is taking a little charge over that. We're also starting, we're planning to start a clinical trial later this year with scientists here in Latvia. Um, there is also a team of, of uh, scientists uh, assessing the economic benefit of this kind of program in Copenhagen Business School right now. And we're planning to expand that, uh, that evidence gathering uh, so we can get all the evidence necessary to commercialize it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. I love that button, reduce stress. I would be clicking on that pretty much.
And our next pitch is from In Label. Please welcome. Hello, everyone. How are you? Great, thank you. Great. Okay, so is working? yeah, okay. everything is working. So your time starts now. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Rivis, and we are In Label. By working together with the manufacturers, we provide customers with confidence that the products they have are, are authentic. I bet that all of you in this room have at least once wondered whether the product you're going to purchase or have purchased is authentic. Did you know that the global uh, that counterfeiting costs to industry $650 billion every year, which in fact equals to 7% of the global trade volume? For some type of product, counterfeiting reaches even over 25%. This is huge. We believe that any manufacturer should be able to claim back these lost opportunities with our solution, and impossible to fake fingerprints for various surfaces, hard surfaces. And the manufacturers are actually trying to do this already. The market of what they're willing to spend in such solutions has reached 122 billion, with annual growth of 14%. The key verticals that we have identified here are luxury, pharma, parts, spirits, and wines. We spotted opportunity in the automotive industry parts segment. We narrowed the focus down to around 1,000 original parts manufacturers from Germany that have to prove the authenticity of their, uh, of their products to, uh, to car and different system manufacturers. To prove the interest, we have already signed test project contracts with two of them that started in January this year. Now, let me tell you how exactly we can work with manufacturers to prevent counterfeiting. By working together, we can develop a unique label design, which is a thin, transparent film that we can apply to each product surface using existing equipment. It can be as small as 2 times 2 millimeter and thinner as the paper. We're after use existing camera technology to process the label for tracking and authentication purposes. That tracking is then registered within the internal database. Once the customer performs label processing, the same way, using, for instance, smartphone camera is directly linked to the internal database to confirm the authenticity of the product. When the blockchain becomes as an industry standard, we will be ready to integrate within it as well. Now, using this technology, the products will be impossible to fake because every label is unique at the microscopic, at the nanometer level. Additionally, we are low label costs due to low integration costs because existing equipment could be used super adaptable with different label application methods like hot spray, industrial coating, or even laser burn that none of the other technologies can offer. And with a super discrete with direct integration into ready product surface. There are two ways we can work with manufacturers. First, paper label processing or system licensing to print as many labels on as many products as needed. Additionally, we can offer free mobile app to scan the label and verify the item's authenticity at any given time. Since the establishing company, we have raised 80,000 euros, completed first lab prototype and site, site, uh, signed two test projects with large German OEMs. Our, te our team includes two venture entrepreneurs with experience commercializing science for large corporates, our scientist Dmitry, the brains behind the technology. And at this point, we are looking for industry advisors, in particularly in anti-counterfeiting uh, products development and implementation. So if you know any, please come and talk to me afterwards. And we are supported by three um, accelerators and also by our industry uh, partners that serve as the industry uh, advisors at the moment for us. Now, we're looking for industry partners and pilot customers for joint development and implementation of this technology in the other fields, other applications. And we are looking, we, in a few months' time, we will be opening uh, a round to raise additional 520,000 to build our first industrial version of our system. Thank you, and please come and talk to me afterwards on possible synergies. So, go on with the questions. Um, yes, so your product in the end is a label which you stick on a product, or is it on the surface of the product? Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Uh, it is a thin, transparent film. Thin, transparent films can be added to hard surfaces in different ways. So our core competence is being able to read thin, transparent films using regular camera down to the nanometer scale. At that scale, everything is so unique, like a fingerprint, no matter where you put it on. So. It's, it, it's many technologies how you can apply those films on different hard ma uh, materials. In a, for automotive, for a metal, we have identified that you can create a thin transparent film with a laser. 
And what laser does, it heats up the surface and metal oxide layer is created. And that is exactly thin transparent film that we use as our mark, as a label. So it can be also in industrial coating. Then it would be something on top of the surface. In a metal, in this particular area, it is not on the top. It is, regular, it is uh, changing the properties of existing surface. And then you need a, a proper reader to read your, your uh, Regular camera with our, with our algorithm. So in, a, in essence, uh, our core competence is, yet yeah, our technology is a software. Software for cameras and as for lasers, software for lasers to mark the, uh, uh, the surface of the metal in a, pro in a proper way. Uh, I understood that uh, automotive industry is your beachhead market. Would, uh, you, would, it you, is would, would you know how much they pay uh, today for solving this problem and what are the existing solutions they use? Existing solutions, for instance, uh, our partner, industry partners now, they saw a, a uniqueness in our technology. They use uh, QR codes data and data matrix codes, which is uh, two-dimensional uh, QR codes, but that does, does not really protect, so they are interested in... Uh, before we actually started the company, we had a, a meeting with the, one of the largest parts manufacturers in, in, in Europe, and they admitted uh, 100 million losses uh, in 2017 due to... They used three of the market's uh, most uh, available uh, solutions, and they still, uh, still had such great losses. So they were... Um, pleasantly surprised about our technology. They said, well, that's great if you can uh, manage to uh, get it to work. Uh, that's, that's great. So therefore, that um, encouraged us to actually start the company. So there are many solutions, and depending on where do you use those solutions, there is pros and cons. Uh, some of them, uh, like RF chips, QR codes, uh, you cannot either put it on the surface or they cannot withstand certain temperatures, etc., etc. So our uniqueness is that it can be applied in so many different ways uh, on the hard surfaces. And uh, we can read it down to the nanometer scale, which is so unique that you cannot really reproduce. So it is a, and it, every label has a random surface structure. It is not specifically designed. Random surface, unique like a fingerprint on every single surface. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll continue with a presentation from this app. Please welcome. Hi. Hello. Hi. I'm nervous. Yes, a little bit. This is my first time. I, speaking is not my strong side, but I think I do my best. Okay, be okay. calm and be bold. Okay. <laughs> Hello, my name is Dennis. I'm CEO of this app. Let's start. Today, I can buy a kettle connected to internet. TVs, fridges, security systems, and even shorts, everything connected. But most expensive asset of our everyday life, most of cars are still offline. Do you ever worry about car if you have to leave it in unknown location? Is it still there? Or somebody doing something bad to my car? Do you ever worry when somebody uses your car and you have no idea how? Should I expect some problems with car condition or not? Lot of worries time to time create huge stress for most of us. Companies have similar problems. How to get car errors instantly and provide first aid? How to predict car breakdowns? How to get parking time from a car and bill automatically? How to get driving data to create an individual insurance plan? If I say, we can significantly reduce your worries in a simple and fast way. I will just give you a small device. You will plug it in your car by yourself with no problems, and your car become connected, visible in your smartphone anytime, anywhere. At the same time, we can, pro we can provide valuable information to the companies to build new, modern bridges to car owners. Uh, on the one hand, CISAP focuses on two types of users, owners of passenger cars and owners of commercial vehicles. Both of them have worries. But commercial owners could multiply their worries on the number of cars they own. On the other hand, 
CESAP is looking for companies interested in data from cars, cars in new channels with car owners. Today, connected car market rated more than 50 billion euros and growing very fast. In next five years, it will be 200 billion. Imagine that only 16% of cars will be connected by 2020. This is extremely good reason to start fight now and to conquer this market together with us. Now our, simple mod our business model are very simple. One part are users who pay us activation fee to get a device and subscription fee after. The other part is companies which will pay us much more to get information from cars and car owners. Our competitors mainly focused on professional solutions in narrow direc directions. Our strong side is affordable, accessible, user-friendly product for mass market with focus on ecosystem where users have access to many different services that make their life much more easier. Last summer, we create a smartphone app. Now, we signed contract with Toyota and Honda dealerships and start testing with customers. We're raising 250,000 euro to create a community of 5,000 car owners at least till the, till the end of this year. In next year, this community will bring us 300 revenue minimum plus revenue from the companies. I am sure that our experience and competence will bring success to CISAP and to our collaboration. Now we're looking for our partners to bring CISAP to users together. And now we're looking for investors to create CISAP community together. Now is the time to be a part of CISAP. And now is the time for your questions. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now is the time for your questions. <laughs> Um, yeah, you said, you said that your device will provide data. What kind of data will your pro, uh, device provide to the user? Uh, we can plug any device. This is not our core business model. Our core business model to collect, uh, to use any device and collect any data. And to be a provider between uh, B2B sector and between two co consumers to share these expenses, these costs, uh, because f to, for now it's... Uh, Quite complicated. For example, if you have a service to build automatically parking, you, you have a small margin. You can't uh, provide a device to every customer. But if we provide this service for many different B2B sectors, it will be valuable. So we want to build new market. So, so is that your device or that's someone else's device? Yes, this is one of our devices. Uh, we, we don't produce it. We have a contract with uh, different manufacturers. This is Teldonica device, but uh, we can use any. Uh, this device has special fir firmware that is designed by us. So it's... May I have a question then? As, as you're holding it, you said I can buy the device and plug it into my machine. So yes. what do I need to unplug to plug your device? Nothing, but if you go to the uh, car repair service, you need to plug this device to the diagnostic port. And to plug the computer, you will need to remove this device. But uh, in other case, nothing to remove. As I understand, now the data is being collected from my phone by Waze, by Google. Yes. How different is the data that you're collecting? It's significantly different because your phone, it's... Uh, about your personality, when you move, uh, when you do some uh, actions. But when you plug in car, we know everything. For example, position of car, for, uh, it's, it's connected to the car. And no errors about your actions. It's the first and the second, uh, we can collect much more data from the car because we read data from the car central computer as well. And the device is... Uh, also have Bluetooth to communicate with uh, modern cars like uh, uh, electro cars and so on. But um, can't, can't those device manufacturers then also just make a mobile app? No, Th this is just manufacturer. We don't work with uh, manufacturers who has uh, such business model, only manufacturer. Um, Tiltonica don't have uh, business uh, mobile app. You, you said you know everything about the car user. 
basically. So how safe is the data of the car user in your company? It's quite safe because today, today's technologies uh, used in IT field is, uh, I don't forget this word, uh, encrypted, encrypted data. So on only one way, nobody, even us, can't get this data. All right, thank you. And uh, we are on to nanotechnologies, I believe, because the next pitch will be delivered by Edia Nano. Hi. Am I right? Yep. Nanotechnologies? Yep. That's right. Great. <coughs> All right. Your time starts now. All right. Hello, my name is Victor, and I'm the co-founder of Adio Nanotech. And we create nanopowders like no one else. And I explain you why. We develop the technology of nanopowder production, which is quite interesting. We can create solid material from gaseous state, literally in seconds, just by, com by compressing it. And this is how it works. We inflow gas into the reactor, we generate compression and temperature, compress it, and boom, we have a powder. Moreover, we can control the properties of each powder. Its also, method is also scalable, it's single step, and we have 100% outcome. So far, we have developed three powders, which are based on silicon, and all of them have the outstanding properties. This is purity of 99.9%, .9%, more than 95% of particle size similarity, which is monodispersity, and surface coverage area from 200 to 300 square meters. And all these properties allow us to mix the powder with other materials. And here it comes to the applications. We can mix our powder with the plastics, which is widely known polymer. And these polymers are used in various industries for automotive, electronics, aerospace, and others. Let me show the example in the automotive industry. These guys use polymers to create the car bumpers, which are the first line of defense of each car, and they protect passengers and the pedestrians on the low velocities. And the industry constantly work on improving the properties of the bumper its elasticity, hardness, and weight. And we actually can help them to achieve these goals. Just by adding 0.3 grams of our powder per 10 kilo of the material, which will cost around 20 euros, we can increase the tensile strength up to 30%, which increases the energy absorption, and breaking strength up to 25%, which increases the hardness of material. And all of this has been tested an in-house laboratory with polymer named polyurethane. So the market polymers in the automotive industry is quite huge. It's more than $18 billion. However, we are not limited to automotive, as I said before, this as the polymers are used in various industries. And the old plastic and polymers market is more than $600 billion. In terms of business model, it's quite simple. We'll license our technology to the polymer manufacturers and also providing constant consultancy on improving the technology. And just for all this, we receive the royalty from them. So our team has two co-founders, Tom Slapiums and me, Victor, and the best our CTO and head of R&D, Anatoly Saprykin, who has more than 40 years experience in inorganic chemistry. So right now, we are looking for the polymer experts to join our advisory board and work on different applications, as well as the polymer manufacturers with whom we can together do tests and generate more positive cases. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, and uh, time for a Q&A. Uh, where, where are you in commercialization? Sorry? Okay. Where, where are you in commercialization of actually then um, Currently speaking, we're speaking yeah. with companies ready to pay something? We're looking for, firstly, commercialize the, in the automotive industry. We have some uh, iterations with the UK-based uh, automotive producer who is quite interested in our technology, but they are currently using different polymer with which we didn't have conducted the tests. So it's our next milestone to do tests with other polymer and provide them this data. Automotive um, industry, sorry, uh, have pretty long lead times, a couple of years to get into a model. Uh, so do you have any other plans for more quick to market uh, type of solutions? Yeah. Currently, we really concentrate on the automotive market since we have the 
positive, first positive feedback about the using of exactly our powder in the polymers. Um, yeah, I, I imagine the margins in the polymer market are pretty small, and the, the parts which are polymer are pretty cost sensitive. So how much more would uh, your product add in the costs of a, like a car bumper in percent? Car bumper. As, yeah, as I mentioned, the, we can sell this powder for 70 euros per, ki per kilo, and they have just to add, let's say the bumper weight is 5 kilos, the modern bumper, they have to add the 0 0.15 grams of powder, which will cost around 10, 10 additional euros. So it's just a four powder. Of course, it may be some additional work force, but the, the powder itself is very cheap. But, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, more questions? Well, while there's time, um, about the scale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. <coughs> no, it's scale of your uh, process right now, how much can you produce versus right how can you now, scale it up? Yeah, with current uh, laboratory prototype, we can uh, produce up to five grams per day, but with first investments like uh, approximately 20,000 euros, we can do one kilo per day. And there is still room for improvement. Okay, thank you. Maybe thank the you. Pass uh, microphone. Okay, to one more question, maybe? Thank you. Uh, where, where, how do you have identified that molecule and this material? Where, where, what was uh, with, where, were you connected with uh, uh, public labs? And uh, do you spread your, your, your invention in Europe? No, currently no. And, and where it came from? Came yeah. from. You, who, who has discovered this, uh, this Yeah, material? it was in uh, Novosibirsk by the, our scientist in the Nikolaev in Organic uh, Institute. He just cr they created this reactor which allows to create nanopowders in a single step and they have developed there this silicon powder, silicon carbide powder. Mm. It's very interesting. Come yeah. to see me, please. All right. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. And the next speech will be delivered by Aimo Labs. Uh, do I pronounce this right, yeah? Pronounce is absolutely correct. Can you hear me? Ah, no, you can, I think. Yeah. Your time starts now. Okay, perfect. So, oh, so my name is Matthias Kaiser, and I present you today IMOLAB, the fast and easy way to find machine configurations. So, why do we care? Um, the thing is, in additive manufacturing, uh, we found that it's very complicated to find machine configurations. Um, machine configurations are necessary because if you have a machine and you have a material, you don't have a production yet. What you need is a process, and machine configuration are, deep, are, are these processes. Um, the problem with this, it's very complicated because, in, especially in additive manufacturing, machines have uh, um, up to two to three hundred parameters, which can be adjusted. That means you have a lot of possibilities for adjustment, which also makes it very complicated. Additionally, the input parameters and the output are non-linearly uh, non uh, connected, which makes it for humans very hard to comprehend. This leads to the situation that it's very time intensive to do this. Uh, it can take two to three years uh, to find a machine configuration for a material. And it makes it very cost intensive because uh, engineers and uh, scientists are working on that. That leads to the situation that you have currently in uh, classical manufacturing uh, roughly 10,000 different materials to produce from, whereas in uh, additive manufacturing you have only less than 100. So what we can do about this, uh, IMOLAB software introduces uh, artificial intelligence uh, a process uh, to the uh, search of these machine configurations, which reduces the complexity of the problem. So we can approximately reduce the time by a factor 8 to 10. Additionally, uh, we introduce an agile approach to the experimental process and we help the scientists to plan their uh, experiments, which further uh, uh, decreases the time needed and also decreases errors uh, uh, during the experimental process. And we have a free search function which allows to find new uh, uh, material properties, which is very interesting because you can uh, increase the value of your existing portfolio. Um, so let's talk about the market. As I said before, um, we have 10,000 materials in classical manufacturing, less than 100 in AM. That means in the next years, hundreds of new materials have to be made printable, which is absolutely impossible if, you, if it takes two to three years for each material to do so. This is, of course, for us, a huge potential. 
Um, of course, there are other companies who also want a piece of the cake. Um, I cut the software world into three parts. This is, first of all, automation of the classical pro uh, um, process. There's one example here in Latvia, Fab Control. Then there are uh, um, companies who work on big data machine learning approaches, uh, for example, Optimate from DMG Mori or Fraunhofer Institute. And there's a third solution which we are following. This is a small data approach using artificial intelligence, um, where we're currently the only ones. We can discuss uh, why uh, the small data AI approach uh, is better later on. This is our team. So there's Pavel Satsivkins, me and our two programmers. Um, the great thing about this, uh, our team is we have everything. We have, uh, um, f first of all, scientific experience with uh, Pavel. I myself, I'm a, a more the business guy, but I also have a master in physics, so all the team has actually uh, um, a scientific uh, basis, but also very good uh, um, business knowledge. That makes us a great team. Also two very young and motivated uh, programmers we have who do a very great job. Um, so, about uh, what we have planned, um, currently we're searching uh, mainly uh, um, strategic investment and partners out of the industry and mentors. This is uh, very important. We're currently part of an uh, incubator in Germany, Xpreneurs. They help us a lot, but we need more input uh, from you out of the industry and out of the uh, investment world. So, thanks a lot and please, any questions. Thank you very much. So time for questions. So what is your business model? So the business model, yeah, sorry, I didn't go too deep into this. So we will basically uh, sell software, most probably uh, as a cloud uh, service. We have to check if the industry is okay with this approach, because I'm not sure. Uh, but for us, it would be, of course, better in the beginning to, to offer it as a, as a, as a cloud service. To mainly uh, aim is to machine manufacturers and material manufacturers, of course. And what is the technology readiness level of your uh, project? So we're somewhere between TRL uh, 5 and 6, so we have it validated already with industrial partners. We're currently, we're, next week we have a kickoff of a uh, uh, um, project with one of the big uh, machine manufacturers. Uh, they want to try our software and we want to see what else we can do, how we can implement it to their process, as is currently uh, uh, where we are. Um, we're not a company yet, we're still on, on uh, uh, academy level, but we will commercialize within this year, and we will have already paying customers already within this year. And uh, talking about your end customers, are those the machine uh, equipment manufacturers, or are those the manufacturers of the end product? So there, there are three things to it. So currently, it's mostly will be the machine manufacturer and the material manufacturers. These are the, the guys who are most interested in this. However, if we further develop our, our product, we want to add now some additional features using uh, um, digital twin technology. Um, it, will be, it will become more and more interesting also for end users. Because currently, it's uh, still interaction with the, uh, with the real world necessary. So you have to actually print something and give feedback to the software to, to reach your goal. But in the future, this will uh, be reduced further and further, and then it becomes more and more interesting also for end users, just when they want to change their, uh, their production, uh, predictive maintenance we can do later, uh, we can do suggestion of uh, uh, machine configurations, uh, things like this. We're not there yet, uh, but this is approximately in the next two to three years, uh, realistically. But for different machine manufacturers, how much do you need to customize your software? Um, so the basic, so the, the core of the software uh, doesn't have to be uh, uh, customized that much. Of course, API we need. And they're all manufacturers. There is no industry standard currently. So this is all over the place. Sometimes it's Excel files. Sometimes it's more uh, sophisticated API. So this is, this is, of course, an issue. This, this will take also some programming for what we need also investment. Uh, my name is Gerard Rosenberg. I'm a French expert and a U European U Union uh, expert for additive manufacturing. So if someone wants to talk to me. I, I, I wanted to ask if you have a partnership with uh, uh, French, uh, French labs, because that would be of very interest for them. And what you are doing, it just you, you get a, a startup, which is a French startup, which is a, 
doing exactly the same, which is called Dassault system, but I won't tell them that I show you. <laughs> okay, thanks for that. So, no, we don't have any uh, cooperation with French laboratories yet. It's mostly concentrated on Germany and the UK. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thanks a lot. Bye. <coughs> And uh, we have our uh, next speech uh, from um, Svebotics. Please welcome. Thank you. Here go. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Svebotics, my name is Xavier. I'm coming from Tallinn, where we created the company. Uh, what we do is solar energy, solar electricity. What is interesting with uh, this solar panel, when you have one solar panel, Basically, if you have an electric car with one solar panel, you can drive 5,000 kilometers per year. And the cost, it would be about one euro per 100 kilometers. So this is a really interesting technology, solar panels. But what's happening exactly in the cities? Who has solar panel here on his rooftop or in house? Nobody? So, oh, one, okay. Same situation, uh, usually, uh, solar energy is not so easy to get. So the first problem is because, like me, if you live in a flat, you cannot put your solar panels on the, on the rooftop because you don't have access to it. Many people think as well that uh, it's expensive, there is not enough sun, uh, they cannot manage the technology. And two more problems that are really interesting here, uh, this comes from a survey we made with customers, they don't have the power available at the right time or the right place. If you have solar panel on your roof, on your house, and you need to charge your car in a different city, you don't have access to your solar energy, right? So basically it means what? It means that solar energy is good, it's attractive, but it's not yet available. And this is where we are tackling the problem. So what is it exactly? We propose a mobile apps where you will join. We have solar plants all over the place in the cities. This solar app will allow you to book solar energy when you're booked. Then you can use the energy, use it when you want and where you want. For instance, here today I'm, a, I'm in Riga, but tomorrow I will be in Paris, and then I can book from Riga solar energy for my electric car in Paris. And I will be able to use to charge my car there. So what is it exactly? Apps, urban solar plants that we design, that we patent, and a, an exchange, like a stock exchange, but only for solar energy. So the current market, how is it? The price first. If you see, if you take a look at the price in Europe, so the megawatt hour of energy is from about 100 to 700. In US, it's a bit less. And this is where we can operate here. Basically, we can provide a lot of cheap energy in the cities. Rooftops, less than 15% of potential rooftops are uh, already uh, occupied by solar panels. In the US, for instance, the market is 7 billion square meters available. We're going to install a lot of solar panels a bit of everywhere. This is the Google uh, Project Sunroof. We have numbers as well for cities like Geneva, Helsinki. And then there are trends. So this trend is pushing solar energy everywhere. So what we do, we create a marketplace. We take a cut on the production of energy, each transaction. We have a no-string approach, low cost, and we are positioned around flexibility, affordability. We are customer-centric. We want you to use solar energy when you want and when you need it. The team is coming from engineering, software, and marketing. What we are asking for, finance the one-year pilot, test our apps, develop the pilot sites, extra, and then we have the next round, which is coming soon. It's about four million hundred, uh, four, four million hundred, four million euros. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, and let's proceed with questions and answers. 
How, how do you think you'd be able to provide electricity that's cheaper than regular grid electricity? It's cheaper because the sun is uh, cheaper electricity. So here we yeah, have solar the, panels. The equipment, equipment and installation cost and, and maintenance and so on. So have you actually costed it that it would be cheaper? Yes, than grid? these numbers that we, we are able to, to say here, the price uh, in Tallinn, we expect to, to be able to uh, like uh, lease a solar panel. It's like a lease. 70 euros per year for one solar panel, okay, everything included. But the solar panel is here for 20 years, of course. So, it's real numbers, these numbers. So, so who is going to pay for the solar panels in the end? Is it the customer so, or is it the, the, the one who is living in the house or are you paying for so all the solar panels? Or? You as the user, you don't want to invest. So the investment will be uh, for coming from uh, investors, so mainly solar developers or some real estate owners, they are ready to spend money to make their building green. So the most of the plants will be owned by investors, real estate owners. We are just the operator of the exchange and of the system. And uh, what is their advantage to sell the energy to you and not to the, to the grid? Uh, to sell to us, to, to, go to, to put the energy in, the, in our exchange. Uh, the advantage is that we have uh, partners, we are connected to the grid, and we do all the balancing. It means that typical, uh, typical situation, for instance, I am an hotel, hotel owner. I want to make my building green. I don't have the budget. What I do, I call Swibotics. Swibotics will deploy, will manage everything, find the financement to make the solar plant on the hotel. Okay? The hotel will get an incentive, they will get free energy plus a discount the price of the energy, okay? And who will pay for that? Their customer. Customer will be able to come here to say, I want to pay part of my bill with solar energy. They will get a discount as well. But, but if, the, if the grid price is higher than the solar price, then why, why wouldn't the hotel sell their solar electricity to the grid for a higher price? Uh, basically, um, the system, you understand, we have the energy produced on the building. The energy will primarily be uh, consumed inside the building. There is no transmission. Where are the cost of the electricity? It's not in the generation. It's in transmission. We totally suppress the transmission. We don't have this cost. This is why we can have this price. Yes? Would your uh, system also uh, cover the, the energy storage? We have, so, uh, in this presentation, it's very short, but basically, each building becomes a service center for our exchange. So, we have uh, solar energy that we produce, we have data set about the environment, about the solar radiation, we have storage, we have an electric vehicle charger. The building becomes an energy, energy point connected to the app. So, in your app, you will be able to see where there is a charger, uh, if there is storage for backup, whatever, and so on. We can also sell services to the grid. We can help to uh, regulate the frequency. We can do a lot of stuff. But basically, it's, uh, it's becoming a node. Each building will be a node. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. And actually, I should thank all the participants, the jury, and the audience. And uh, let's proceed with a coffee break. We will continue at uh, 4 p.m., and we have seven more pitches, so please return to your seats by 1600 shop and enjoy your coffee.